Walmart's going to close four stores in Chicago this weekend. By the way, that is half the total in Chicago. Lydia, who is here? Uh, what? Well, she's in Chicago. What is Mayor-elect Brandon Johnson saying about these uh, closures? Hi there, Stuart. Brandon Johnson is saying the closures here in Chicago are part of a larger nationwide trend. Listen to this. Something that you know Walmart has been doing around the country. It's there was certainly um, some reflection of the way business is shifting and, and changing throughout the country. Now, as soon as you thought that no mayor could possibly ever be worse than Lori Lightfoot, a.k.a. Gay Beetlejuice, in steps Brandon Johnson, y'all. Get ready, Chicago, because you're in store for a whole lot of chaos and very sad and depressing times ahead. Because if you haven't heard by now, Walmart is closing 20 locations across the entire United States, four of which are in Chicago, eight total in Illinois, and they cite it due to poor financial performance. Hmm. I wonder why they're not making any money because folks in the hoods there, they always love their neighbors as themselves. They always honor their fellow brothers and sisters, right? It couldn't possibly be anybody or something that people did there, right? Wrong. Because watch this mother's reaction as she just goes into her local Walmart in Chicago, just trying to get some food and milk for her kids. This is sad. Every grocery store looks like this. Everything is either on the floor Look at this. Can't even get no f food for my kids, G. Look at this. Came in the store to try to buy something. Cause I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a thief. Look at this. In my hood, can't even get no food for my kids. <laughs> Babies need milk. Can't even get nothing for my kids, bro. I feel like an animal, and black people made me feel like an animal. Y'all did this to us. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the store. Look at this. But we, we, we this, this is what we're fighting for. This is honoring George Floyd. Yeah, you're honoring George Floyd. You're honoring Black Lives Matter, right? <laughs> I honestly feel so bad for women and, and people like this that are just working hard every day, just trying to take care of their family and their loved ones. And she said it. She's not there to steal. She's not a thief. She went there to buy something like you're supposed to do at a store. You're supposed to have to pay for the goods and services that you want. Nobody owes you anything. People out here act entitled like the world is supposed to give them handouts just because they're breathing on this side of the grass, just because they walk the face of God's green earth. It don't work that way. And I just pray that, that she's able to relocate to a safer place for her family and, and others like this, because this may not be what Chicago wanted, but it's exactly what Chicago deserves. That may be harsh to you, but one minute they're shouting, we want jobs, we want jobs and all that. But in the same vein, in the same breath, these people start stealing and, and looting and, and everything they can get their hands on. But now there's no jobs, no jobs at all, because you ruined that opportunity. You can't allow locals to steal without consequences. Don't blame Walmart. Don't say that they're racist. Don't don't try to uh, mislead and misguide where the blame and responsibility lies. Ask yourself, what have we as a community through culture and policy actually done to create a climate that drives away business? Why don't these businesses want to stay here and, and keep taking care of the people in the community? Because they don't want to have to deal with this. Any common sense business person would pack up tent and leave if their products keep getting taken. That just is what it is. Why would why would they not? Why would they stay and and take on this level of 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 business or lack thereof? Like giving away merchandise is not a sustainable business plan. Don't blame the corporation. Blame the community. White, black, brown, yellow, candy stripe. This ain't oppression. This is self inflicted punishment. And I live in Illinois. I don't live in Chicago. It's like a whole different country up there. If it weren't for these Looney Tunes up there and, and JB Pretzels, aka Pritzker, uh, it would be a red state here. There were, it wouldn't be a liberal blue state whatsoever. Illinois is a beautiful place. I'm from here, born and raised, and I love it. I'm out here in the sticks. It ain't nothing like this. We don't got to deal with any of this crazy chaos, but people are so ungrateful for the things that they've been given. There's no fathers in the homes to teach them discipline, and if they do have a father, their father's probably out there gang banging, slanging rock, 
killing people, whatever. You need to live in a godly home with moral foundations and principles, some ounce of just moral decency. Can we get that back in America? Because the black community used to be something to look up to when they actually had trials and tribulations and were victims and were oppressed and did get discriminated against, separate fountains and all the, the horrible things that have happened to black folks over time. That ain't what it is in 2023. Stop looking back. Stop disrespecting your ancestors. We all have had ancestors that have dealt with some sort of oppression, no matter what their skin tone is. But don't try to hold on to that 1960s, 1860s, that old school rhetoric and act like you're being held down. You're the only ones holding yourself down. And then when, when, when you get caught, when you get held accountable and have to pay the piper, whether it's law enforcement, whether it's a store closing, whatever it may be. Oh, then you want to cry victim. Then you want to virtue signal and act like you weren't messing up. No, no, no. Look in the mirror. That's why you're not where you want to be. That's not why you're not getting the things and attaining the success that you want. It's insanity. You keep electing these Democrat officials and expecting different results. Not just in Chicago and California and all over the country. What in name for sake? If you expect that these liberal Democrat people and politicians care about you, you're in for bad news. Like what, what examples do you need? What more proof do you need that the... These people are out to stuff their own pockets. They give you all these open-ended promises, all these slogans and propaganda, but they never deliver. They keep you divided. They want us divided, black and white. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. We all bleed red. We're all human beings. I love you. You, you should love me no matter what I look like. Freckles, no freckles. We were all created in God's image. We're supposed to be image bearers of the almighty, lifting up each other, loving everybody. That doesn't mean... We, we agree with everybody's viewpoints. That doesn't mean we don't call out sin when we see it. We're all flawed individuals, but you can't steal and expect good things to, to come out of that. It's like someone who's fat rocking too many LBs and, and wondering why they aren't fit and healthy because they keep eating McDonald's and greasy garbage. It don't work unless you do. Discipline and accountability is what it comes down to. Take notes, woke victims, because the world doesn't owe you anything. If you want something, go out there and earn it. Be the most productive, most valuable, most... uh well-rounded person that you could be and you'll probably get that job and if you don't there's probably another job out there for you You just got to keep seeking you can't go in there and, and start stealing you can't wait around for handouts or, or become a thief or any of that a thug a, any of these criminal activities are not going to amount to anything good be law-abiding productive americans that takes care of their families that's what it needs to, to, to change the whole landscape. And I, I truly believe this. I got to wrap it into perspective for you, give you something, some hope and some glimmer of light, because that's what Jesus provides. Jesus paid the ultimate debt for us to look to him. I know a lot of people in this world, they don't know Jesus and, and they wonder why they're going through this chaos. They wonder why they're going through this term, term, turmoil. If I could get my English right, they keep leaning on their own understanding. They keep having this of this world thinking and think that they can create their own way. Hey, heads up. The, the plan's already been created. The whole game plan is laid out for you in the New Testament. We need the old. We got the new with Jesus Christ, though. The whole Bible, that's your blueprint. The basic instructions before leaving earth. Learn it, get to know it, study it, live your life through it. God can use very flawed people and situations to bring good for future generations. No matter what you may view it as, you're not God. I'm not God. I don't know why he does the things he does when he does it, but I'm here to serve him. I have complete faith in him. His game plan is always to, to serve his kingdom, to bring good to all those that love him. If you don't love him, if you worship the world, if you worship man, have all this idolatry, these uh, lying, cheating, stealing tendencies, of course, bad things and darkness are going to come from that. You can't expect anything else. You can't be that naive to the fact. And most people don't even think critically from a lens that, you know, this could have a greater purpose. They only want the hot take. They only want their, their instant gratification and the label of right, wrong, or indifferent. The Almighty doesn't work for you. He's the creator of all things and wills all things to happen however he best sees fit. You got to deal with that. No matter where you're from in this world, you don't get to, to structure this world. You don't get to structure the outcomes. You can make all the plans you want, but the Lord determines your steps. So keep on judging sin righteously. Keep on living by the book. Keep on loving God, praying God, counting your blessings each and every day. And don't expect the world to just give you something if you're going to go out there and steal and act a fool. I pray for this woman. I pray for y'all. If you live in Chicago, I love y'all. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. Let's keep this conversation rolling. Don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring that notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a video. And, you know, feel free to share this video as always. The, the algorithm is always working against Christian values. So definitely get this out in front of the public so they can see what real truth looks like, not just this perceived fake 
of this world truth. But outside of that, if you want to support the channel, you like what I'm doing over here, you can always get awesome designs like this. Isaiah 4110 made by my lovely wife over in her Etsy store. She also has insulated tumblers like this, this Soldiers of America one right here. Many other Christian American designs, petite, petite, small designs to big, big and hefty 5Xs. We got everything you would like over there uh, linked in the description section down below. Big thank you to my Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee members. Y'all know I love you. You putting your hard-earned money behind me. I am forever grateful. I can't even put it into words how much you guys mean to me and just allowing me to monetarily support my family when YouTube made demonetized videos or, or whatever it may be. But if YouTube takes us now, I'll be over on Rumble. So make sure you're following me over there as well. But until next time, I love you. Godspeed. I'm gone.